Phantoms, fear and terror await the team as we return to Derbyshire. and this week I've brought you to Derbyshire and a very scary place indeed. Welcome to Most Haunted and the Matlock Baths Pavilion. The building was erected in the late 1800s, reputedly by German labourers, on the site of the old stable block of the now demolished Fish Pond Hotel. It was built to exploit Matlock Bath's growing reputation as a spa and resort centre, and as well as housing two large ballrooms used for tea dancers, it also held the pump room to which day trippers flocked to take the waters. Since its heyday, it has seen many uses, including a billet for soldiers during the war and a roller skating rink. Today, it houses a mining museum on the ground floor and a popular nightclub in the upper stories. However, it aroused our interest due to its reputation for strange occurrences and supposed ghostly sightings. Amongst other phenomena are reports of huge temperature fluctuations, the sound of footsteps made by unseen feet, poltergeist activity and strange accounts of alarming spectral figures. Now, with ghosts apparently in abundance and a phantom round every corner, you would have to be very brave or very mad to want to stay here alone and in the dark. Well, last night, Jeff and I did just that. And this is what happened. Um, we've just sort of been walking around the main areas and it's all very, very quiet. Quite a few creaky floorboards in the, in the hall area. Um, but we're about to just uh, spend a little bit of time on, on the stairs. About these stairs that are so eerie. No. Is there anybody here with us now on this staircase? Can we hear your footsteps? Please make a noise. Please tap again if you can hear us. That's underneath my foot. Can you make that louder, please? Please knock. There's definitely something going on with these stairs. Jesus Christ, what was that? Oh, it's a pond there. You must Where? have bumped into it there. Here, Jeff. This one? Yeah. No, I, no, no you way. Didn't. No way. <laughs> Are you sure? Absolutely positive. Hello? 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 This is the main corridor to the nightclub and a very scary place to be. It's not just the heavy booted footsteps that echo through the hallway, nor the unexplained cold spots which suddenly manifest that scares people the most. It's the ghostly figures of six children and an adult surrounded by mist that fills many with fear. One staff member who witnessed this terrifying apparition was so affected by it that he had to take a considerable time off sick. I visited the mining museum and although there didn't seem to be any residential spirits here, I was straight away connected with the spirit that had died in a tragedy in the 1720s when a, a lead mine had collapsed. And the most interesting thing about it was four men came, made their presence felt, but also a young boy. And it felt very poignant that a young child would die in a mine.
The main nightclub area has seen many strange things in its time. A poltergeist has been active here since the 1960s, opening doors, unbolting cupboards and throwing objects across the floor. Dark figures have been seen with stark regularity, one being that of an old lady and the other a tall man. Both are said to roam the whole building, but prefer to be seen here. As this place was originally built for tea dancers, it's not surprising that at least one of its former visitors thinks it still is. She's called Beth, and her ghostly image has been seen walking around on many different occasions. She also likes to make herself known by turning off pieces of equipment, but she's not the only phantom to wander this area. As you can see, this is now a successful mining museum, and it's these artifacts that form the basis of our next haunting. A large, dark figure of a man, dressed in miners' working clothes, has been seen following visitors and lurking in the corners. Some believe that he wants his tools back and will keep haunting until he gets them. Given the experiences of myself and Jeff on the previous night and the stories connected with the pavilion, I wondered how Dr Kieran O'Keefe would approach the coming investigation. Well, Kieran, here we are in the Derbyshire countryside. It's a beautiful place and a very, for me, unusual location. In fact, two locations almost, because we've got this sort of mining museum here and then we have a nightclub. But it's all the same building because, of course, it used to be um, tea rooms for yeah. dancing. People used to come, come along and do that. So I suppose it's a completely different feel to, to the same location. It is. It's a great place to investigate for that reason because it's two dynamically different places. We've got... I guess consistencies perhaps between the hauntings of the two places but for me it's a little bit of a, a psychological nightmare to deal with. When the investigative team come into the miners museum there's an expectancy, there's a you know a, a suggestion effect already there and the same thing I think with the nightclub but different sort of things to consider there. Out of all the areas in, in both this miners museum and also in the nightclub part um, which is the most fascinating for you and what, what areas do you want to concentrate on? I'd like to concentrate in the nightclub, uh, in the upstairs corridor next to the VIP area, where there's been cold spots reported and also the footsteps. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about whether we're actually getting footsteps in that particular corridor. Um, it's a case where we might be getting machinery, we might be getting some other noise, but then people automatically misinterpret it as footsteps. They try and give it some sort of identity. Well, they've actually sort of um, reported on the fact that it, it, it sounds like shoes on concrete walking along. Now, that whole area is carpeted, so that's quite unusual. That is quite unusual, but again, I'm going to be on the lookout for perhaps some sort of uh, acoustic anomaly in that particular area. So, for example, if somebody is walking in a different area of the nightclub, can you uh, hear it right next to you, for example? Or is there any heating or electrical items that we need to watch out that might be clicking and giving the appearance or giving that kind of false sound of footsteps? Okay. So you're looking forward to tonight? I am looking forward to tonight, yes. Uh, it's a lot of psychology, uh, a lot of perhaps uh, visual hallucination explanations for what's going on, but still, I'm looking forward to it. The moment had come for David Wells to take his customary first look at the location and impart his thoughts to us. What would he uncover? I can hear children giggling mm -hmm. and laughing. It's the first thing I can hear. The most dominant one in here is male. There's a noisy, there's a oh, really? stamping male. But there seems to be a bit of abuse. So it seems to be, she seems in a, a, she's quiet because of trauma. David, Kieran and I began the initial exploration of the pavilion upstairs in what is now the nightclub area above the mining museum. OK, David. Unusual one. It is a very unusual one. Mm. We've done a nightclub before. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we've done a couple of nightclubs, haven't we, really? Mm -hmm. But um, this one... 
has two different locations to it. This right. bit and then there's another bit. So let's just keep going straight on. Are you picking anything up along this corridor? The, the, the immediate thing is there is quite a lot of noise. There's a lot of, you know, noise in the old ear holes. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, and I'm talking, you know, astral stuff. I'm not talking. You can hear, like, chillers and things, can't you, guy? The first thing I can hear are, are children. I can hear children giggling mm -hmm. and laughing. It's the first thing I can hear. Obviously, you know, it wasn't all the nightclub. You know, that's clear. It's, I just want to go a bit further along yeah, sure. because I want to get to the bottom of why there's children here. How many children are you hearing? Is it difficult to tell at the moment? Yeah, it is. I mean, there's more than a couple. It's just kiddies' laughter. Mm. Mm. There's a playful little gaggle of them. You know, there's not, not like a couple of kids. There's, I, I don't know. There's, they're, they're kind of moving around quite swiftly. I wonder if people are in here. They kind of feel that. But wherever there is children, there's. We've discovered really there's always a carer, there's always an adult of some description. In this case, it's a it's a female. She's very well. She looks tall. She's a very big hat, and lots going on in it, and um, kind of gown that's mumped up here. <laughs> and um, she's they're well to do. These kids are well to do. There's not. I don't think they're poor at all. Can you see any colour with them? Can you describe what this woman looks like? I know you say she's got a big hat, but yeah. can, is she young? Is she old? No, she's she's an older woman. I'd say she's an older woman, and she's. Um, the gown is very pale. It's either a pale yellow or a white or something, but it's a very pale gown, what, I'd 50 say. 50-ish or something like that? Um, yeah, maybe maybe just slightly older than that. Mm -hmm. But she's not, you know, no, no offence, but she's no chicken, really. Okay. But I can't understand why they're here, unless it's a much-loved place, but then the kids would have grown up. And, you know, do you see yeah. what I'm saying? Why are the children here? I don't understand why, because I can't sense any trauma with the children. But sometimes you say that people will have died, say, at 40 or 50, maybe mm. older, and yet they come back and present themselves as, as younger. Can you hear the knocking? Yeah, I just thought it was moving on. It's been happening for about the last few years. Yeah. Okay. Blimey. It's very loud. Isn't it? Yeah, it is very loud. So do you think they're presenting at this age, or do you think that's the age that they, they, that they all left together? No, I don't think they did. I'm trying in my mind to sense if there's trauma, so fires or something that would have taken a large group of people across at one time. And I can't sense it. I really can't sense that at all. So hopefully we might be able to sort of, you know, come into contact with these children and this yeah. woman and find out a little bit more about them. Mm. And there's tapping going on in here as well, which mm. is continuous. Do you think it's the, the children that's making it could the, the rapping noises? Yeah, it could be the kids making the noise, but I can't interact with them. That's the trouble. I can't get into them. Which is what's making you think maybe it could be residual yeah, energy, yeah, memories. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to move on? Yep. Okay. I want you to try and get to the bottom of what this place was before. Can you go back and, and see it as it was when it when it was first built? You know, the, the image I've got is gardens with um, people strolling around, relaxing. It's kind of like the old-fashioned pavilions, like we have in Bournemouth and, and places like that. It's kind of like a, an 18th century holiday destination. Not, okay. not hotel-y, no. but places, place people would come to rest and you know, enjoy the air. Who do you think is haunting this part of, of, of the building? There are two very strong characters in here. One is, is again, a lady, and I'm not sure if she's the same one as a female, but the, the most dominant one in here is male. There's a noisy, there's a oh, foot really? stamping male, and a, a, quite not aggressive, but a shovey. Um, he may slam doors, he may push people around. He wouldn't have traveled here. Mm -hmm. He would have been a local that would have come here because it was on his doorstep. Right. Um, but it's kind of like during the week, real hard grafting, farming, kind of, you know, hands-on kind of a... And then come down here, it was a bit of finery, you know, and a bit of, you know, jiggery-pokery with finery. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and he feels, he feels that kind of... He's quite um, aggressive towards women, and I don't mean hit them, I mean sexually predatory towards women. Any name with him? Not at the moment. No? Age? No, not at the moment. He's presenting around 35. Okay. There's lots of banging going on. Yeah, there is. There is. Is that over there? That was back there. Oh, and again. There isn't anyone back there. How did he die? The initial impression, and I'm going to go with it because I can't, you know, is, is that he, he died in an accident. He's crushed to death. So I, I guess not much after that. I think around 36, 37. And I can't get a name. An initial? 
it's a, his, the first name is a T, so it's a Tom or Thomas, something like that. It's the second name that I'm having a problem with. Do you want to have a, a move on somewhere else, or do uh, you want to go that yeah, way? Yeah, let's go. Let's go this way. There is no one back there. There's no one. No one. Did we all hear those bangs? Yes. Yeah. We all did, didn't we? Yeah, this is going to be scary. Yes, it is. Quiet. Shh. If that's you, can you knock twice? Do you mean there's any harm, Thomas? Yeah. Oh, no, it's three. Is that three, John? Okay, yeah, yes. I do. Did you die, Thomas? Did something fall on top of you? When you died, did something fall on top of you? That was two knocks, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that? Was a whistle. That was a really bad wheeze. It was a wheeze or a whistle? It was, yeah, a... It was a high pitched wheeze. Was it from down where you are? No, yeah, I, I honestly thought as Wigan was walking, we heard it. It's again. Tom, can you make another noise for us? Try and do that. Was that you that did that wheezing noise, the whistling noise? Try and do it again. That, what? what? That Wigan, was one please of tell us. me that was you. No, it wasn't me. That was you, wasn't it? That oh wasn't my me. God. That was from down the stairs. That's right by my ear. Oh, I thought it was you. So it wasn't it was me. I thought it was Wigan. No, it wasn't me. I didn't make oh. noise. Did you hear that, Kieran? Yeah, I did. Like John, did you get that on tape? I heard it, so yeah, it'll be there. I'm there. Turning there for you. Tom, we're aware of you, we know you're here, thank you. Can you make that noise again? What was that? What did I hear? Breathing. Did anybody else hear it? I thought I did. I thought it was you, but it wasn't. No, I didn't even hear it, so it must have like further up. I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm actually trying to hold my breath more than... No, it was a real, it was a... Did you hear it again? Did you hear it again? Was that, was that you? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Please, Tom. I'm hearing I'm it. I'm I, I know it's not you, but it's it's coming it's from mm. it's coming from there. Tom, make make breathe out again. Breathe out again, Tom, so we can hear you. That I definitely heard. Thank you so much, Tom. Please, can you do it again, but louder and longer for us, please. Can you hear that? I definitely have that. John, yeah, can got you it? Hear that, John? I can hear it and I'm watching everybody. You know, we're all standing here, still as we can be. Thank you, it's Tom. Thank you Sorry, so much. I'm breathing heavy now because I'm trying to hold my breath. Thank you, Tom. Well, he's here on the stairs then, yeah. isn't he? He's definitely here. Should we keep walking? Yeah. Wow, that was amazing, all those noises we heard. Trying to work out where we are. Back in the stage. Ah, in yeah, the yeah. Oh, I know. In the I'm just kind of doing a search around here. Maybe the female. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the quieter she. Quieter one. Yeah. Maybe. So, and she seems to be more of a corner. So she'd likely to be in a corner. She seems very quiet and reserved. Can you can you tell what time period she, she's from? I would say she's. Um, do you know what? She's suddenly got a, quite a good impression there. She's more. She's she's of the same period. 18, late 1800s, maybe 1890, around that time. I'm slightly concerned because she seems a very quiet woman, a young woman, maybe not even hit her 20s yet, but there seems to be a bit of abuse. So it seems to be, she seems in a, a she's quiet because of trauma. Oh, right. So she may have been, um, she may have been beaten or she may have been raped or, or there's that kind of, that's why she's quiet, there's that kind of, 
that silence about her. And it's difficult to tell whether it was at that age or maybe even a lot younger and she's still carrying the trauma. Yeah, of it. yeah absolutely, but, uh, absolutely. So in that, that time period, obviously, would have been, like you're saying, uh, the, the tea rooms. Yeah, yeah absolutely, so, and she's, she's of that, that time. So would the, the awful, you know, the atrocity, would it have happened here when it was a tea room or in her own private home? No, the strongest impression is that it would have happened here. That's, that's the impression. Do you want to go to night vision now? Yes. OK, brilliant. Let's get ready and do that and see what happens. Let's go this way or...? Yeah, let's go down here. Eager to capitalise on the tapping and eerie noises, we decide to switch to night vision. Different parts of the building now. OK. I can hear a band playing, so I'm suggesting it might still have been a dance hall. Yeah. <laughs> OK. That's true. There's one female, strong astral, who's still dancing, God bless her. Right. She seems to be... I can't see a thing. I know. <laughs> she's doing... It's almost like she's got a... a you know, a, a, an invisible partner. Uh -huh. So her hands are wherever, they, you know, not, not big on ballroom dancing. So, so she's doing the waltz Yeah, she's, so she's there, so she's, she's, she's moving around like this in this space. So she's doing all of that, right. moving around in this space. Um, and in her head, you know, the music's constantly playing. And time period? I would put her... It seems quite early on. I have a freshness about it, so about 1880, 1885. Okay. There's a, there's a freshness. It's, um, they give me that with fresh paint smell. Oh, which, right. you know, okay. so There's a freshness um, to right at the very beginning. Again, why she here is always the what you come across. Yeah, why she's still she, here. Yeah, exactly. Why she's still doing it? Could it be that she's just really happy? It's the time she was really happy, and the rest of her life didn't mount to much, I suppose. And how old is she? How old is she presenting? She's young. I would say even about nineteen. She's a very young slip of a girl. She doesn't feel like an old woman at all. And it's not this this quiet lady no. that had the horrible... She seems specific to here, so I don't know, I guess, that if there was two dancing areas, I don't know what the difference... I can't get what the difference would have been. One would have possibly been grander than the other. But she seems specific to this area. OK. There is a miner here as well. Right. And he's a... He's... He will make himself known by... Um, People, it's more sensitive, because remember, everyone can be sensitive, can't they? Mm. More sensitive people amongst us might smell him. By that, I don't mean to be rude, but he might, they might smell body okay. odour. Right. As far why as, would he be here? I mean, the only thing I can think of, and it just, it just struck me as I put my hand on this, is there may be something he was personally attached to. So, the, so it's a psychometry thing, do you know what I mean? Right. Is there something he owned, a lamp or a... Do you know what I mean, that he wants? He's come with that, that yeah, object. Yeah, he's come with it, absolutely. Is there a name with him? No. No, no name yet. There is, a, there is a name flying around, I don't know if it's his, which is Robert, and I don't know if Robert's the minor or the... Robert! If there's a spirit or a ghost or an astral being called Robert here, please can you make yourself be known to us? Can you make a noise? Bang on something, Robert. I'm getting a bit edgy, sorry. Why? <laughs> just because just uh, it's almost like he lifted his head when you said it. And, oh, really? Yeah. Robert! I'm calling out to the spirit of Robert. Can you hear us? Come and talk to us, Robert. Make a loud banging noise near us. Can you hear no, I'm, that, right, I'm about three a, feet behind you. There was a little tapping noise there to my was right, it? yeah. I heard that too. Yeah. I'm a little bit concerned. There's a couple here that might kick our asses later, you know. Oh, not in a... That's nice. This, this feels like an entry hall, maybe into the dancing bit. It feels kind of bustly, you know, people wandering around, oh, right. saying little coats being put on and taken off. Right. Kind of so you can see that happening all the time, but at the mm. moment, a, a spirit that would be here all the time is, is this miner again. The miner's strong in this this side of the building, which means there was never a coal mine here, you know, no. of that, I'm, I'm sure. Perhaps on his time off... He came for, he a, came for a dance. Yeah. It doesn't even feel like that, because yeah. he's presenting dirty. I mean, he's presenting, his face is filthy. I mean, my father was a miner, I know what they looked like yeah. when, they, when they came out of the pit, and that's, that's what he looks like. He looks like caked How in it. bizarre mm. that he's still here. Mm. OK, so definitely come in here to, to try and talk to Robert. I think here, mainly there, though, I'd say. 
Okay. Yeah, but we could try here. Okay. Walk between. All right. The pavilion was proving to be alive with activity. Would David learn more of the solitary dancer and why she seemed tied to this space? And what of the more sinister presence of the miner? Only the coming hours would tell. What the f is that? Can you move something in here? What is it? of the Matlock Bath Pavilion continued with the hope of hearing more from the young dancer and with trepidation as to why the ghostly figure of a miner should be caught within the confines of the building. to exploit the paranormal activity within the building, Carl and Stuart went alone to the area that had once been used as a gym, but is now closed to public access. Robert, are you here? Two. That, that, mate, that's coming from in there. It must bust through there. That's the stage. Ah, that's where the pool table is, isn't it? Is it coming from in here, though? Because I don't know. Because when I was in there, you guys were hearing it here. So, so when you were up there, you didn't hear it? Because we kind of heard it from... I, I thought it was coming from more down there. No, I right. heard it in there. When I was... I was standing near the door. But did you think it was in here? Yes. Right. But now we're standing here, it sounds like it's coming from in there. That's down there. Listen. Was that not? No, no, that wasn't that was me. You. No, it was, was not at all. That wasn't me. You just didn't breathe out then? I didn't, know. That's down there. Listen. What was, was that you? not? No, no, that wasn't that was me. You. No, that it was, was not at all. That wasn't me. Let's go back down. Tell you what. Go on. What are you doing? Why don't we here, get in. get two chairs? What the f is that? No f way. Where's that? Where, where do you think that is? I don't have a f clue. Is it through there? I initially thought it was through there. Then I thought it was coming from over there. But it can't come from over there, it's a f***ing wall. Was that you? Tell me that wasn't you, Carl. That's not me at all. That, I, I can't make a noise like that. Unless there's two of me. You wasn't breathing out then? What? Should we just put the camera up and go in there? Yeah, because I think something's going to happen. I don't want to miss it. Do you want to go in there? No, but we need to. Let's go in. Go. Now it's racing like that. Let's go in there again, Carl. Should we try and get the others? Yeah, let's go. Yeah? I would rather go back that way. Hang on a minute. Come on. I've just heard some. Where's that doorway, Dan? I've just heard something through there. Oh, here we go. Come on. David and I continued our investigation in the old gym and stairwell areas of the pavilion, the scene of tapping and strange noises. There's a strong male presence here. Remember, I said he likes to scare. If there's anybody here, any astral beings, anybody that wants to talk to us, any spirit people, if there's a gentleman here, please make a noise. 
please tap, move something. Can you please let us know that you're around? Can you sense him? Uh, yeah, I, c I can sense someone moving around and underneath it all, do you know what I mean? Not underneath the chairs, but underneath the... It's very hard to get to where he is. What was that? I heard that. If there's anybody here, please, any spirit person, can you move something? Push one of these stools over. Push one of these chairs over. Let us know that you're around. Can you tap or bang on the floor near us? Do something to let us know that you're here. Make a noise. anyone here? Could you make a sound like you made earlier? Shit, listen, listen. There's movement where we've just come from. A slight rustling noise. I'll keep quiet. Call out again. If there's anyone here, anyone on the stairs or downstairs, could you make a sound? That was over there. Right. Hang on, on. Hang on a minute. You <laughs> don't need to get out yet, Kath. Please throw this back or something else back. What's that noise? Look, see these banking. That's me walking. No, that's your over here. Well, Put your hand on that. Is anyone underneath it? Banging, no? If anyone's down there, can you lift it up? Feel it, feel it, can I feel it? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's down there, can you lift it up? Because we're stuck up here. <laughs> Someone was banging on the <laughs> bottom of it. I, know they were. I could feel that. that. That was vibrating, that. It still is. I think I'm going to have a panic attack. I can feel it through my foot, through my boots. Right, well, if we're stuck in it, we might as well make the most of it. Come on, do something else. If you have been throwing things to us or at us. If you are outside trying to get in, please do so. We'll throw a bulb at us. There's plenty around here. There is plenty of them, yeah. Like Blackpool Illuminations up here, isn't it, with all that lot? <laughs> hey? What was it? I could growl. Was it? <laughs> See, that's, there's a car. You can hear a car, but it mm. sounds like a car. That wasn't a car. But that, the first bit was not a car. Come on, throw something at us. There's so much stuff in here. If you, can, if you can move something, you can throw it. Please throw something at us. Anything. Someone up here. Sorry. See if someone's. Uh... Sorry. It's gone cold. It's gone cold. I know it has. It has gone cold. Feel it, calf. Can you feel how cold it's gone? 
Oh, hey. oh, oh, oh no, no, no! What? Got to go. What's up, Carl? I'm scared. What are you doing? I'm scared. I'm f***ing scared as well. I can't get out. I'm scared I'm in the f***ing hexagonal room or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm scared shitless. We're in stuck thrown at Answer your bastard phone. Mm -hmm. Joe? Joe? We're up in the dome. Will you come and get us? We're locked in. Do you know where the dome is? Put her on speaker. It's where the, 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 you go up the, 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 uh, the stairs. Put, have we got a speaker on that, Kath? Hang on, hang on. Yeah. The, the, the thing's closed Oh, up. Ah, Hurry up! Ah. Oh. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, f***. Oh, what's just sort of touching my f***ing ear? Oh, this is freaking me out. All right, man, calm down. Oh, calm down. Lord. Is she coming up, Kath? Where did that ball go? I don't oh. know. Have a look. Here's it. Oh, they're coming. I can hear them. Back to first down. And you can go last, woman. Ah, cool, cool. Hey, get down first. Kath, be careful. Just go slowly. Go slowly. Come here. With so much having already happened, what more surprises were to come for the team in our remaining hours within Matlock Bath Pavilion? Do you have a grave? No. Shit, yeah, I mean, what, <laughs> no, it? Yeah, but it won't. Because I'm like a paranormal redundancy pal. <laughs> then again. odd occurrences that had befallen Carl, Kath and Stuart, Ian joined them to continue the investigation of the other private storerooms in the hope that yet more spectral activity would be uncovered. Oh, this is just another storeroom. Who's that? Not upstairs again. That's Kieran. Mm, that's not Kieran. Why was that Kieran? Yeah, Robbo, if you're moving around upstairs, make a louder sound. Bang on the floor. Is there anybody up there? Anybody here? Anybody living? It's <laughs> <laughs> gone cold. It is gone cold. It's very strong. That we've, was been good. Hearing, we've been hearing that all day. When That's we were really doing, good. That's really loud. When we did Kira's interviews, we heard that the whole time I was getting cross because I thought it was somebody living, walking, walking about. up and down there. Well, if that's you walking around, what are you looking for? Please help me. What makes you think that? He's just looking for something. He's looking for something or someone. I think we should bring this to a close. Okay. I think this is a good start. And I think okay. Start. Let's leave it open, yeah? Do you want me to leave it open? Yeah. Okay. okay. Following our separate vigils within the mining museum, we joined together in an attempt to provoke further evidence of ghostly activity. Is anybody here? Give us a noise. Listen. That's them up there, but I'm just wondering if there's banging on the floor here. I don't hear that. Listen. Is there anyone here? Two for yes, one for no. Are you male? Are you that, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but are you a minor? What's that? I don't know. That's right, right here. Oh, that tapping. Yeah. Are you searching for your lost equipment? Two places that one came from there, one seemed to come from that side. Are, are your tools in the museum? That's right here. Do you know where in the museum they are? So, why are you searching for them then? 
funeral with you? Did you want them buried with you? Does it annoy you as being here? Are they annoying you downstairs? Is... Did you try to contact with David earlier? Shall we get them up here? I don't know. If we got them up here, would you stay with us? Do you, want, do you want me to get them up? Let's get them up. Guys! Yes. We've got we've got some sort of communication up here. If you want to come up. We were we were talking and getting firm responses. We actually said. Are they annoying you downstairs? <laughs> Did you try and communicate with David earlier? Bum bam. Do you want everyone to come up here? Here, Ben Man. He, he knows where the things are. He's he, but he wants them with him. Where he's buried. Basically, physically, he wants them out of here and where he's buried. Oh. oh. Robert, two two knocks for yes, once for no. Do you have a grave? No. Are you buried in the mine? When we were doing the GVs yesterday, the woman did say that one of the guys who worked here knows someone who works there. They actually found those tools in a mine. So maybe that's wherever they found it is where he's. Yeah, where he is. Well, they need to go back to that mine then, don't they? Yeah. Do, do the tools need to go back to the mine the, where they were found? If he died in a mine, his natural place to haunt would be a mine. Do you see what I'm saying? If that's where he died. Yeah, but if he wants, if yeah. he wants his tools, it's that. Which is why he's here. Because mm. didn't you say he's not here all the time? He just no, comes and goes, doesn't he? Yeah, it did. What did Dr. Kieran O'Keefe feel the investigation of Matlock Bath Pavilion had achieved? A number of alleged paranormal phenomena occurred at the pavilion at Matlock Bath. Stuart, Carl, and Kath actually went into an upstairs area of the pavilion known as the dome. A number of quite significant phenomena occurred here. It appeared as though the rubbish in one corner of the dome actually moved. Uh, they reported that a light bulb smashed near them. Oh! Oh, and also that they were getting various knocking and tapping sounds. Well, like, Put your hand on that. Is anyone underneath it? Difficulty is that we've got no way of verifying if the movement of the objects or the tapping or even the light bulb falling was actually paranormal in nature or it was merely because the three of them were quite excitable, walking around, they may have knocked into something. Even just shifting weight can actually result in a knocking sound or the creaking of the floorboards below them. On one of the early walk-arounds on the back staircase behind the actual nightclub area, the whole crew actually heard what sounded like breathing sounds. Now, initially, I was very skeptical about this and even inquired uh, as to whether there was any natural source for it. The owner said that there was a boiler in that particular area, but on further investigation, we can discount the possibility that it was actually the boiler causing this breathing sound. Um, what? That Wigan, was one please of tell us. me that was you. No, it wasn't you, was it? That oh wasn't me. I do have to remain slightly sceptical, however, because there were a number of pipes actually in the wall right next to where the group was standing. All in all, the investigation at the pavilion at Matlock Bath was fascinating because it was two different areas, the nightclub and the museum. And certainly there did seem to be a lot of alleged paranormal phenomena captured, but I, for one, am remaining sceptical about all of it. Our experiences at Matlock Bath Pavilion had been fascinating. The tappings, footsteps and apparent poltergeist activity suggest there is an atmosphere of unease that is not easily explained. Until next time, sleep tight.